All right. <laughs> Welcome. Thankfully, thankfully we will not be out here too long. Make sure my mic is on. All right. So welcome to worship, everybody, and um, special Sunday as we bless these these palm crosses, process into the church, and then hear the story interspersed with song. And so welcome, um, and it's good to be here with you all today. So the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Bless you, O Lord, our God. Guide our journey through this holy week as we walk together through the drama and mystery of this holy time. May the presence of Jesus touch our spirit and transform our very lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So our first gospel reading for today is from Mark chapter 11, verses 1 through 11. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, The Lord needs it, and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their, spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. We praise and thank you, O Lord. For the great acts of love we celebrate this week, all of which proclaim Jesus as Lord. On this day, he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was welcomed with shouts of joy as the son of David and the king of kings by those who threw their garments and palm branches in his path. We ask you to bless these palms and those who bear them. We pray that we, together with all saints, might always proclaim Jesus as our Lord and King with our own lives, following his example of faithfulness, compassion, and loving service to our neighbors. This we ask in the name of the one we honor and praise, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We go forth in peace. In the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, 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 Hosanna. And we repeat that as we process our way in. <laughs> Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. 
Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. And blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord.
please be seated. As you can, as you all know, and those who are visitors can observe, we are doing things out of order today. Um, on Palm Sunday, we will be doing our prayers, sharing of the peace, offering and announcements now. Um, offering, since COVID, as most of you know, we have not collected a traditional offering. There are offering plates in the back if you'd like to make an offering or if you'd like to give online. Um, but we're thankful for everybody's uh, continued generosity. And um, for our prayers, any prayer concerns this morning? Karen's having surgery on Tuesday, so keep Karen in prayer. Um, Michael and Brenda Kaplinger are both sick. Michael had uh, pneumonia, and he thought that he, last I, last I heard, Brenda had the same symptoms. And so um, it's going around because my friend Steve was hospitalized with pneumonia. He's doing better now. Um, we want to keep the family of um, Tariq Afridi in prayer as they mourn his passing. Tariq is Michelle's brother-in-law. Um, and so um, pray for, for them as they mourn. Hello. Hi, how are you doing? <laughs> so, yes, thank you, Nancy. So I had two kinds of pneumonia, not even one. I had to get both of them. And I'm doing much, much better. And Brenda never had pneumonia. She had a, a respiratory virus that's not the one that's going around, which is sort of similar, and also bad bronchitis. But we're both about 85% now. Good, good. Way, Thank way, you. way out, way better than I was. I mean, I was, I had 104 temperature and was in the ER a week ago Friday. Wow. Well, thank you for the update. I'm glad you're feeling better. Thank you very much. It's Thanks funny. for the prayer. So much want to look that way, but the camera's been there. <laughs> That's um, prayer concerns Betty. So Betty's sister's brother-in-law passed away, and that was who died suddenly at home. Yeah, she haven't got the details. The Schreiber family. So you can keep the Schreiber and Afridi families in prayer. Other prayer concerns? Yes. Oh, okay. Okay, so health, prayers, and structure. Whew. Hopefully the winds don't get any worse today. Yeah. Other prayer concerns? Yes. I know. Helen Jackson's house, it's in escrow. Cool. So Helen's adjusting well, and the whole family will be there for Easter. 13 people. Cool. Awesome. Thank you for that update. Yeah, I saw it's in escrow. <laughs> so hopefully we get good neighbors. <laughs> good. Good. All right. Any others? Let us pray. Trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation, and a world in need. Blessed one, today the church sings glad hosannas as we enter Holy Week. Prepare us to bear witness to Christ's suffering and death endured for our sake. Gather your people around the cross and comfort us with resurrection hope. Lord, in your mercy, renew your good creation and protect the balance of life on earth. Encourage the work of foresters, sci scientists, arborists, gardeners, and river keepers. We pray for the health of pollinating insects, songbirds, and native plants. And Lead each of us to use the gifts that you've given us to care for this world. Lord, in your mercy, 
establish peace and justice among nations, especially in Israel and Gaza and Sudan and Ukraine and other places where violence reigns. Hold to account any with authority to judge others, that they use their authority in, great, in um, manners that give equity and care. Grant that courts, legislatures, and local governments will serve with integrity and compassion. Help us to hold all of our elected leaders to account by contacting them and by using our votes. Lord, in your mercy, bring hope to any who feel forsaken or forgotten. Make a way for refugees and asylum seekers. Reunite families enduring separation. We pray for any who are incarcerated, institutionalized, or in foster care, that they may know your love. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for healing for those who are undergoing treatments, facing surgeries, recovering from surgeries, hospitalized, or recovering at home. We pray for doctors, nurses, technicians, and all caregivers that they may use the gifts that you have given them. We pray for all of those whom we've mentioned before you and those whose names we continue to hold in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, we pray for those who mourn. And today we lift up the Schneider and the Afridi families. Comfort them in their grief and help them to receive your peace from those who come around to care for them. Lord, in your mercy. Blessed one, our times are in your hands. Sustain us in discipleship. Help us to continue to learn your story, to share our own stories of how you have cared for us. And as we encounter this story, may each of us here hear the words that we need to hear and may those words help us to remember your great love and your great grace lord in your mercy accompany us on our journey god of grace and receive the prayers of our hearts through jesus christ our savior amen and i invite you to share god's peace with one another in whatever way you feel comfortable sharing that peace and we will have our announcements. And then, as you see, the, the rest of the service is the reading of the gospel story. We will have Holy Communion where it shows up in the story, which is the third reading. And everybody is welcome to receive communion. Good morning, everyone. Can't believe Easter is here already. Ooh, came fast. Announcements for this week are Monday, uh, we have stretch and prayer at 5 p.m. here in the sanctuary. Wednesday is quilting at 9 a.m., uh, followed by word and prayer at noon, either in person or online. And then on Friday, we have the Lenten Caravan, uh, which will go to New Progressive Baptist Church. Uh, dinner, 545 to 645, 7 o'clock worship. And of course, on Saturday at 8 p.m., we have our Easter vigil. I invite everyone to come and attend. It is, it is a lovely service, and uh, it's very rewarding to be here. So if you can join us, please join us. That's all I have. Did I miss anything? You're pretty you? quiet today. Got to perk up a little bit. A little yeah. life in the... Huh? Yeah. I know, I know. I know when you're all ready to go, huh? But past, yeah. pastor had to change the service, so no, I'm just kidding. Um, you mentioned the Easter vigil, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. 
Yes, please come. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Okay. And it might be raining, so if it's raining, I won't make you all stand out in the rain at the beginning. We'll make a we'll we'll make adjustments. <laughs> Okay, so we invite our readers to come forward, and we will hear the first. First reading is taken from Mark chapter 11, verses 15 through 19, 27 through 33, chapter 12, verses 12, 28 through 34. Then they came to Jerusalem, and he entered the temple and began to drive out those who were selling and those who were buying in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves, and he would not allow anyone to carry anything through the temple. He was teaching and saying, It is not written, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all the nations, but you have made it a den of robbers. And when the chief priest and the scribes heard it, they kept looking for a way to kill him, for they were afraid of him because the whole crowd was spellbound by his teaching. And when evening came, Jesus and his disciples went out of the city. Again, they came to Jerusalem. As he was walking in the temple, the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders came to him and said, By what authority are you doing this thing? Who gave you this authority to do this? Jesus said to them, I will ask you one question, answer me, and I will tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it a human ordinance? Answer me. They argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, they were afraid of the crowd, for all regarded John as truly a prophet. So they answered Jesus. We do not know. And Jesus said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another. And seeing that he answered them well, he asked him, Which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, The first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than you. Then the scribe said to him, You are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and besides him there is no other. And to love him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as, as oneself, this is much more important than all the whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one dared to ask him any question. The second reading is chapter 14, verses There's one. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs>
The second reading is from chapter 14, verses 1 through 21. It was days before the Passover and the festival of the unleavened bread. The chief priest and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, not during the festival, or they, there may be a riot among the people. While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar, a very costly ointment of nard, and she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, Why was the ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii, and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her, but Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for you. For you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for the spirit. Truly, I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, The teacher asked, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready, to make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. And when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one after another, Surely not I, he said to them. It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to the one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born.
While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, this is my body. And then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And let us together pray as Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We will join in singing Lamb of God and then afterwards I invite everybody to gather in a circle down in front to receive Holy Communion. The dark liquid is wine, the light liquid is grape juice. Everyone is welcome.
May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue with the reading. As I told the, I told this story with preschool and chapel last week using the, the eggs. And this is the part of the story that's not a good part. <laughs> but it's an important part. We continue in Mark, chapter 14, verses 26 through 31. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to them, Even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said, Venomently. What? Venomently. Venomently. <laughs> Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. fifth reading is from Mark chapter 14 verses 32 through 52. They went to a place called Gethsemane and he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated and he said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and keep away. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, you are asleep. Could you not keep awake? One hour, keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? And thus, the hour has come, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hand. Get up, let us be going. You might betray her in this Judas, one of the twelve, arrived in the garden, and with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. 
Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. All of the disciples deserted him and fled. But one of those who stood near drew a sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were offended? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. Let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. sixth reading is Mark chapter 14, verses 53 through chapter 15, verse 14. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none, for many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. Even on this point, the testament did not agree when the high priest came before them and asked him, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am, and you will be the Son of Man who is at the right hand of the power. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard him this blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy! The guards also took over and beat him. While Peter was below in the cart courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When he saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You are also with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you were talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed, and the servant girl, on seeing him, began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. Then after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know this man. I do do not know what you're talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for a second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, he will deny me. And he broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priest held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, 
and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many changes the charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison, and the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized it was out of jealousy that the chief priest had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with, with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify, Crucify him. him. Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify, Crucify him. him. The seventh reading is from Mark, chapter 15, verses 15 through 39. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him. Hail, the king of the Jews. They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple coat and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place they called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each one should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against, against him read, the king of the Jews. And with him, they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you would who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, Save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with, with him also taunted. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice. 
My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who had stood facing him sought that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was God's son.
family of faith. There will be days when we withhold our praise. Every year I do this. <laughs> there will be days when we dare not follow. There will be days when we ignore God's call, when we choose comfort over courage and ourselves over others. But even on those days, even on our worst days, we belong to God, hear and believe the good news of the gospel. It's from God's love. You're loved, forgiven, and sent out to serve. Hosanna. Amen. May our Lord, whose arms were spread on the cross to embrace the whole world, help us this week to take up our own cross and follow him. Amen.